Good morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. The band got dressed up for you. You like it? <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah. Okay, that's better. Stand up with me. Who's ready to worship this morning?
Great to have you all here this morning. We're glad you're here to worship with us. This next song we're going to do, just a great song, talks about the fact no matter what we go through, God is a God who will do it again. He's done miracles in your past, he'll do miracles in your current situation. No matter how desperate or how distant or how dismal it may seem, he's a God who comes down and he sees exactly what you're going through. He's with you through the struggles of your life, for he is a faithful and everlasting God. Thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battles won. For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet Sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me within your love, yeah My heart will sing your praise again still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me still it still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness
promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me your promise still stands and great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands and this is my confidence you've never failed me yet
lift your voice and sing it today. You will go. Let it be a proclamation that you know He's never going to leave you, no matter what you're facing. He is with you. No, I am not alone. Father, that is a promise today that we can hold on to. No matter what we're going through, no matter what stage of life we're at, no matter the seasons we're going through, God, you always go before us. If we will just trust you, if we will just call upon you, God, you will direct our steps. God, sometimes, I mean, many times, life is painful. Life hurts. God, when we journey on this this place we call our lives, God. There's so many things that, that crowd in, so many things that harm us, so many things that hurt us, so many things that devastate us. But God, when we feel like we're completely alone, we feel like the rest of the world has turned their back, God, you never do. You are a faithful God. You are a loving God. And you look down upon your kids and you're moved with compassion heart is turned towards them, whatever they need today. God, your heart is turned towards them right now. If you have a need today that you need from God, maybe something you're going through, it be some kind of miracle, something that you need from God today, would you just lift your hands all across this place? Father, we lift our hands and surrender to who you are. We lift our hands knowing that you are the only, only one that can do the impossible. You're the one who does amazing things, exceeding above what we can ask or think. We lift our hands not because we're looking to uh, some big favor in the sky, because we know that God, only through our surrender can you do anything. So God, whatever it is today, that all these hands need from you, you know them, you love them, you see them, God, you have an answer for them. I pray that God, as their hands are raised, that you speak life to them, encourage them this day, let them know they are not alone. As you amaze us, you redeem us, and you call us as your own. You amaze me, redeem me, and call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me, and call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me. Call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem. You call me as your own. Thank you, God, for your truth and thank you for your reassurance. We're never alone. May you speak to our hearts today. Let your word come to life, I ask in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Thank you for worshiping. start a new series that's going to take us through up to, up to just about Easter time. Um, this series is called Masterminds. Turn to your neighbor and say Masterminds. Yeah. This series is all about, um, in a world full of, of toxic thinking, in a world full of, of contaminated thoughts, in a world that tells us anything goes and everything goes and, and it's okay if it feels right, do it, we're going to look at... What does God say? Because kind of the model for this, masterminds, is change your thinking, change your life. Because God wants to be the master of our mind. And understand this, the greatest creation ever is the human brain. The human brain is the, the greatest creation ever made because inside it contains all the amazing things that we have seen transpire throughout history. All the good as well as all the bad. The mind is a powerful 
thing. It's a powerful place where creativity is spurred and where conviction is found and where morality is directed and also where all the negative comes as well. It's where deceit, it's where envy, it's where jealousy, it's where all the ugly comes from as well, from, the, from our minds. Our minds are powerful. And because they're powerful, God challenges us to master them. Don't be a slave to our minds, but to master our minds. And so that's what we're going to talk about over the next several weeks. We're going to talk about how do we navigate our thoughts? How do we navigate the patterns of our thought? How do we break down and how do we stop some stinking thinking that's been in our life for so many years? How do we identify? How do we, how do we find it? How do we then make it submit and surrender to who God is? And so we're going to be discussing this and we're going to look at uh, in Scripture, a man named Paul, and you may or may not know of Paul, but Paul was known as Paul. Uh, he was known as Saul before he was known as Paul. His name was changed whenever he was transformed by God. And, and Paul, the, uh, known as the Apostle Paul, wrote most of the New Testament that we read today uh, throughout different books in the New Testament, Galatians, Ephesians, uh, 1 and Corinthians, and so on and so forth. Um, but understand that that. They're not books, they're letters. The books are actually letters written to the church. So the church in the book of Ephesians, that's a letter that was written to the church in Ephesus. Um, to the uh, Philippians, it was the, a letter written to the people and to the church in Philippi. And so these are the way that kind of Paul encouraged the churches. It's the way he instructed the churches because never was there a Christian church on the planet before the time after Jesus, whenever he died and rose again, then uh, when Peter gave the good news and thousands were saved, it began the Christian church movement. And so this, this time that Paul is talking is at the infancy of the Christian church. And he is trying to help them, instruct them, correct them, navigate them on what the correct path is for their life. And so in 2 Corinthians, if you would open your Bibles today to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we're going to look at some words that, that Paul is going to speak to us today. And what's interesting that I always find out about God's word is the same words that he speaks and echoes back then echo in our hearts today. The same struggles they had back then are the same struggles that you and I have today. The same hurdles, the same as today. Why? Because God word, God's word transcends time. Amen? There is no such thing as an expiration date when it comes to God's word. It's a universal truth that echoes throughout history. And so we're going to learn a little bit about Paul and concurrently at the, the letter he's writing. Hold on, I got to get a drink. I had to get a drink. I'm getting dry. Uh, at this current place that he's writing, Paul is at the older season of his life. And he's speaking to the church in Corinth about where he's at, but, and he's overcome a lot of things. And so what he's telling them is, hey, listen, I'm here, but understand, I did not get here without going through all this back there. I came through lots and struggles, lots of pressures, lots of hurdles, lots of pains, lots of, lots of agonizing truths. I came through so much back here, but I'm here because I went through there. And see, so many times as Christians, we think, well, I want to be there. I want to be over there. And yet God says, but you can't get there until you go through what's here now. Journey through what's here You'll get there, but just journey through. And so, so Paul is going to speak to our hearts today. He's going to speak into our lives about he's come through it. How did he get here? He's going to tell us today how he became a master of his mind and his thoughts in his mind. Okay, stand your feet this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, let's do our Bible prayer today. Our Bible prayer says this. We're going to hold our Bibles in our hands. And here's what it says. I hold the hope of the world, the blueprint for life. I will read it, study it, and share it. God, help me to understand it, apply it, and live it. In Jesus' name, amen. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, we see these words in verse 3 and 4. It says, uh, for though we live in the world, we do not 
wage war. We do not fight. Let's say we do not fight as the world does. But he says, because the weapons we fight with, they're not weapons like the world uses. No, on the contrary. What do the weapons that we fight with, what do they have? The weapons we fight with, they have divine power to do what? Demolish strongholds. What do the weapons that we fight with, what do they have the power to do? They have divine power to demolish strongholds. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a fortified place. Whenever an enemy would go and they would try to take a city and a city had a stronghold around us, that means it had a fortified wall around it. And they would say, we have to demolish the stronghold so we can get on the other side to have victory. Today, some of you stand here and your minds are in a stronghold. Some lies that you have believed some, some untruths that have been spoken to you, you've allowed your mind to be combobulated and congested in the chaos of stronghold. And today, I believe God's going to show you the divine power to demolish the strongholds. Father God, help us today to recognize, identify the strongholds in our life. And God, not just identify them, but through the divine power of your presence to see deliverance, to see freedom, to see, God, that the strongholds are destroyed by the power of your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. That word, divine power, power is actually translated into dunamis in the Greek. Uh, and then the Greek dunamis it's where we get our word dynamite from, uh, and it's because in, a, in the dunamis power, there is a, an obliteration that takes place whenever we allow God's divine dunamis dynamite power to break down the strongholds. Paul is writing from a prison cell, and he is saying, listen, I'm in prison, but guess what? I'm not, a, I'm not under strongholds because I have... I have been come through the power of God, the master of my thoughts. My thinking is under the surrender, submission of Christ. Though I may not have much, I have the only thing I need. And today, some of you sit here and you're under a horrible stronghold with your thought life. I can't trust people because people have hurt me and therefore all people are bad, a stronghold. I can't let them know who I am because if I do, they'll judge me. And if they judge me, they won't like me. I gotta put the face on and be the right part, a stronghold. No one really loves me, stronghold. God definitely doesn't love me, stronghold. God doesn't hear my prayers, stronghold. This is never going to be over, stronghold. The pain will never end, stronghold. I'll always be sick, stronghold. I'll never know what it means to have true freedom, stronghold. I'm so ashamed of my past. God, how could God could ever forgive me, stronghold. Paul is saying, listen, we must understand that there are strongholds and lies and thoughts that are spoken into our lives, and those thoughts build up walls around the truth so the truth of God can't get to us in, but when we're behind the stronghold. When we live behind the lies, his truth cannot break through. Many of you sit here today, you've been living behind a stronghold for many years of your life. The stronghold that binds, the stronghold that, that, that blocks the power of God, that stronghold, you must recognize that it will only paralyze you from doing what God truly wants you to do. Because the Bible, just what I just read, his word just told me that, that, that God has divine power to what? Demolish strongholds. Now, that divine power, that demolish, that's not just knock a few bricks off at a time, like, oh, check that, did that. No, no, no. God literally has divine, he has the power to obliterate 
that stronghold in your life. That lie to obliterate, to wipe it, to get you with the truth of God. It does not leave a speck. It does not leave a dust behind. It is demolished that says you can never build it again because God has delivered me through his demolishing power and his divine power to break down the stronghold. So what is your thought? What is the strongest negative thought about yourself that holds you captive? And here's why we want to talk about this over the next several weeks. Because if you have your notes, write this down. Your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thought. I'm going to say that again. Your life is always moving, whether good or bad, in the direction of your strongest thought. If you want to have a changed life, If you want something different, you have to change your thinking. You have to change what you've been putting in here for so long. Because remember what I said, change your thinking, change your life. Now, we can't do it ourselves. It's only through the divine power of God. The Old Testament says it this way, Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, For as a person thinks or as a man thinks, as, they, as a, he or she thinks, as they think, so they are. As, as, a, as we think, our lives are directed. So ask yourself, what are you thinking that's tearing down your life? If you think you can't, you won't. If you think you never will, you never will. If you think you cannot overcome, you will never overcome. If you think my marriage has been bad for years, it's never going to get better. Your marriage is never going to get better because your life is directed by the strongest thought that you have in your life. And we must evaluate ourselves and ask ourselves, what is the strongest thought in my life? What is directing me? What is navigating me? What's showing me what my future is? You know, there was a song in the 80s, and it was, love is a battlefield. Love is a battlefield. No, no, no. The mind is the battlefield, Pat. Sorry, you had it wrong, Pat Benatar. It is the mind is the battlefield because from the mind directs the heart, right? And from the mind directs the, 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 the water course of where we're going. So here's what I want you to do on your notes there. Uh, if you get those out, if everybody would, please get those out. I'm going to have you do a little exercise today, a little, little bit of an evaluation. Now, let me just say at the beginning of this, when you evaluate this, just be honest. If your spouse is sitting next to you telling them to mind their own business, mind your own business, right? Tell them eyes on your own. I want everybody to evaluate yourself today because it's only when we get truthful about where we're at can we determine where we need to go, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, first off, we're going to look at, we're going to grade ourselves on a scale. Are you, are, do you have more worried thoughts or do you have more peaceful thoughts? Like, think about your last week or think about the, your last month. Do you have more worried thoughts or do you have more more, uh, more peaceful thoughts. Um, so do you worry about, you know, what the, what's going to happen in my future? Do you worry about what's going to happen in my family? Do you worry about your kids? Do you worry about your spouse? Do you worry about your health? Um, do you worry about like, how long is pastor Kevin going to preach today? Cause I want to go get lunch. Is that your worry about what you're going to eat at lunch? I mean, what's your worry today? Maybe you're worried. Maybe you're more peaceful. Maybe you just kind of take things as they go. You're kind of like a surfer person. You know, like, hey, yo, man, whatever happened? Hey, cool, dude. You know, that kind of thing. You know, is it, you're just more relaxed. You're just kind of more laid back. You know, take it as it comes. Life's good, even though everything just fell apart on you. Life's good, and, and you feel all confident about where you're at. Uh, maybe, maybe you have more peace when you lay your head on your bed at night because you don't have anything. You're not convicted about anything. You're not guilty of anything. You haven't done anything. You're not worried about meetings you have because you're not stealing from the boss. You're not worried about what your, your employee, fellow employees are talking about, your, your friends are talking about at school, because you haven't said anything. You haven't gossiped about anything. You have just a peace. So which are you? Take a moment. Are you more worrisome? Are you more peaceful thought life? What is, where do you grade yourself at? Okay, go. Second one is this. Are you 
more positive in your mindset or are you more negative? Are you a more positive person or a more negative person? Are you a negative person where you're critical, kind of look at people and make a judgment about them? Like, what is she wearing? Good Lord. She should never wear that again. <laughs> or for guys, look at that car he's driving. He must be compensating for something. Look at the car he's driving. <laughs> There's something going on there. Are you more of a critical person? Do you find fault in every little thing that's out there? And you're, you're more cynical, more critical, and you have more of a negative thought life. You're discontent. Life's hard. I'm never going to get my break, and I'm just not quite there. And are you more negative or more positive person? Are you more, more upbeat kind of person? More like life is good, and, and, uh, and you know, no matter where I go in life, I just seem to have a positive outlook. And people look at you like you're strange because you're positive, and they look at you and go, you have no reason to be positive, but, you know, okay, whatever. You're delusional, you know, and that kind of thing. Are you more positive or are you more negative? Which one are you? Grade yourself and go. Oh, yeah, I see all of you just vigorously writing down your numbers. Don't let them look off of you. Last one is this. Are you more worldly or are you more eternal? Are you more about what you acquire where you wind up in status, how much money you have in the bank, how big your, how much, how big your house is, how much you're acquiring here. Why? Because it's about what I want. Or are you more eternal? Are you more about um, whatever the kingdom of God needs? That's what I want to do. If they need volunteers in the, in the children's area, here's a prime example. They need a volunteer in the children's area. An earthly person would say, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got time for that. But an eternal person would say, if you can use me, I'll be used. Wherever you need me, I'm there. That could be an example. A worldly person is, my money is my money, and God ain't going to get any of it. He doesn't know what to do with it anyway. He don't need it. He's got all the other money. Why can't he just use that money? Or an eternal person says, God, it's all yours. Thank you for allowing me to have a, just a little bit of it to enjoy my life and have a good life. Whatever you need from me, I'll give. Do you believe that, that it's all for you? Whenever we talk about the children's ministry and we're looking at upgrading some things down there, do you, this would be eternal versus uh, earthly. Earthly would be like, they're kids. They don't care. Who cares about their stinky feet? They don't care. They're going home to probably stinky houses. You know, I don't care. I'm not even down there. Who cares? Or are you more eternal and say, you know what? We want to do our best for the little ones because they're our future. We're going to teach them well. Let them lead the way because they are the world. Only a few of you are going to get that. These guys don't even know what I'm talking about over here. We are the world. Are you worldly? Or are you eternal minded? Grade yourself. Go. So, with, those, with that thought audit in your mind, that your worry versus peaceful, your negative versus positive, your worldly versus or eternal, my, my question to you is this, are you satisfied with your answers? Are you satisfied with your thought life? Because really, that is our thought life. That is where we fall in the reality of what we think. Because the strongest thought of your life will direct the future that you're going. It will direct the path, the strongest thought. Think about where your life is moving. Is it moving in the way that you're happy about? Is your life going in the direction that you're content with? If it's not, ask yourself, what am I doing? What is my thought life doing that's destroying everything around me? Because what comes into your mind will come out into your life. What you allow to penetrate here and lie in the stronghold will come out in how you live your life. Life is made up of thoughts, negative thoughts, positive thoughts, worry thoughts, peaceful thoughts, eternal thoughts, earthly thoughts. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. There's a battle. Your marriage is what it is. 
Because of the thought life of the husband and wife. Your marriage is what it is because of your thought life. Your financial standing, your financial status, and what you do with your resources, it is what it is because of your thought life. How you approach and what you think about when it comes to money. Your joy or your lack of joy in your life is a result of your thought life and what you allow to penetrate here in the stronghold of your mind. What you believe about yourself, how you live your life every day is a result of what? Say it with me. It's a result of what? Our thought life. Our thought life is the main contributor. It is the, it is the, the generator of all the direction of our life. So I ask you today, what is your thought life? Where does it stand? Do your thoughts speak about God and how he can help you? Or do they speak about how you're defeated and discouraged and you're never going to get through? What is your thought life? So over the next several weeks, we're going to talk about this masterminds, and I'm not going to get into everything today, but I want to just give you two things, homework, that I want you to do before you leave today. And we're going to build off of these over the next several weeks. This is a starting spot. This is foundational. This is just to get you going, okay? So here's my first thing that I want to, I want to encourage you to do. First off, I want you to identify what is the strongest thought that's holding you back. What is the stronghold thought in your life right now? What is the thing that haunts you? What is the thought about yourself that keeps you back? What is the self-talk that goes on in here that you never utter out of here, but by golly, it's happening in here? Some of you are maybe um, never going to be good enough. Never, I'm never going to, uh, I'm never going to get past my past. My past is too bad. I never get past it. After all I've done, how could God ever love me much less? How could he ever use me to do anything important? Your thought life says uh, you've been hurt, you've been victimized, and because of the victimization you went through, you carry the victim mentality, and you journey in life through the victim mentality. And not only do you journey, but you pass it on to your kids, and the kids pass it on to grandkids because you have believed the lie you're a victim. Those who are victims say, after what they did for me, I'll never trust anybody again. You're, what is your thought life? I'm never going to get the job that I love. I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to have a, a husband that loves me the way that that husband does. I'm never going to have a wife that takes care of me the way that that wife does. And you become dissatisfied and you fall for the lie, the stronghold in your life. And you, you fall for it and you, you come into this place where you're defeated and discouraged and depressed. And you look at your life and you go, I've got nothing. You have fallen for the lie and you are living behind the stronghold of the enemy. The enemy is holding your mind captive. What is your stronghold? Identify it. What is it right now? Close your eyes, think about it. What is the one lie that the enemy has spoken to you over and over again, maybe your whole entire life, and he has just told you, this is you, this is you, this is you, this is what you are, this is how you are, this is what you do? What are the negative thoughts that aren't beneficial, that are not from God? What are the things that beat you down? Being very candid with you today, a stronghold in my life since I was a kid, stronghold in my life since I was a kid, was, uh, has always been uh, body image. My brother, older brother, of, uh, older brother is, uh, is six foot four, long and lanky and skinny. I mean, you stand us side by side, we don't look like brothers, or I look like, I don't know, the milkman or postman or something, I don't know, it's weird. Actually, I take that back. He does because I look more like my daddy. All right. But I've always struggled with my weight since I was a little kid. I've been on diets probably since eight years old. I mean, not my parents never forced me to diet. My parents never talked down to me about my weight. It's just something that I struggle with personally. Now, my brother had a lot to do with it. I blame it all on him. 
because he called me fatty and everything like that. And I'd say, well, you're ugly. I can lose weight. You can't change your face. <laughs> but I struggled with the self-image and, and uh, I've always wrestled with weight. I've always, I've, I've, I've had seasons where I've been, you know, I've been, I've been in re- very good shape and I've been fit. And then I've had seasons where I haven't been. And I, you know, I don't know what season I'm in right now. I'm figuring that out, but I've always struggled with my weight, just being very honest. And it's not because anybody has necessarily said anything to me. I've never, I've never had anybody really tell me, you know, you're fat, you know, or you need to lose weight. I've never had anybody really say that to me. I haven't had, I haven't had bullies do that to me in my whole life because I would beat them down, but I've never really had anybody say that or do that to me. And um, I, just, I just never really had anybody outside say it to me. But my whole life, I've struggled with this thought of my self-image. Even when I was in a, a very lean place, I look in the mirror and I go, man, you're still so, why are you so fat? Why can't you lose some weight? God, did you forget to put metabolism in me? Was that not, did you miss that on the checklist? You know? And so, it, and, and so if you've never struggled with that, if you've always been thin your whole life, you know, you stink. <laughs> I've never had that fortunate place. I've always struggled with my weight. So my, in my thought life, I've had to, wrestle with the stronghold of my own self-image. I've had to, at times, look in the mirror, see who I am, and go, you can stand to lose some weight, but you know what? You're pretty fine. (laughs) And I've had to settle into, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God himself, and I will no longer listen to the lies of the enemy. What is your stronghold? Don't feel good about yourself. You had a bad image about, bad body image about yourself. Sometimes when we have that, what's our first thing? We clear the path and head on to the freezer and grab the pint of ice cream. Because I don't feel good about myself. Well, who cares? I can't do anything about it tonight. I might as well go ahead and binge it down. I'll start tomorrow. We have to change the way we're thinking because we change our thinking, we change our life. We're not good enough. I'm never going to be good enough. I'm I'm never going to get there. God, I can never do what you've called me to do. No, it says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and therefore I know I'm not doing it anyway. It's through Christ and Christ alone. Romans 12, 2 says this, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? By what? We're going to be transformed by what? The renewing of our minds. The renewing of our minds is the the, the only way we renew our minds is by identifying the lie. Identify the stronghold. Are you getting this? What's our first thing we're going to do? We're going to what? We're going to identify the number one stronghold that is holding us back. What is it? I want you to write that lie down this week. In fact, I want you to write the lie down. I mean, I'm, I'm being dead serious with you. I don't want you just to think it, I want you to speak it, and I want you to write it down. Because you not only need to identify, you need to confess that you've been in a stronghold for your life. You had to recognize you're behind a fortified wall. So I want you to write down, because you cannot defeat what you cannot define. You cannot defeat what you cannot define. If you can't identify, if you can't write it down, post it in your house, post it someplace if it says, you know, if it says, you know, um, you, you are overweight, put it on your refrigerator. That'll stop you next time you go to it. You're overweight and you go, okay, this is the lie. I have to figure out how to identify the stronghold. Then leads us to number two. Here's your second part of your assignment this week. I want you to name the truth. Now remember, we're identifying the lie, but now we're going to name the truth that demolishes that stronghold. Second Corinthians chapter 10 says, for though we, uh, though we are, we don't, we are in the world, we do not wage war like the world does. The weapons we fight with, they are, they are not of the world. They are divine. They have the power to demolish strongholds. Here's the verse I want you to get. It goes on to say, verse five, it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And here we go. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That word captive in in the Greek translates as 
a seizure with a seizure by sword. It is where you, in the, in the, in the days of uh, Paul's time, it would have been, when he was saying take captive, he was saying by sword, we take seizure of it and we say you no longer have power in my life. Now what's interesting is Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 5, he writes about this thing called the armor of God. And if you've been in church, you know the armor of God is a, is a powerful representation of what God uses in our spiritual world to fight our enemy. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith. Uh, it talks about the, the shoes fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. All the things that Paul talks about, on, for the majority of them, are defensive. They too, they're to protect us. But there is one thing that is to attack the enemy, and that is, he says, and God gives us the sword of the Spirit. Now, just go with me here. Listen, I'm going to correlate these two together. What did Paul say in Corinthians? He said that we are to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. He is saying we are to take captive by sword. We are to take the sword and make the lie obedient to Christ. What is the sword? The sword is the word of God. So what, what Paul is saying here is he's saying, listen, you're not fighting this lie by yourself. In fact, you're just identifying it, and then you're going to let my word, you're going to let God's word fight the lie to demolish the stronghold. So what you're going to do is this. It says, you know, he says, well, I, I, I don't feel good about my body. I don't feel good about, about who I am. I don't like my face. I don't like, you know, how my mouth moves. I don't like my teeth, blah, 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 all that stuff. And you say, no, no, no. God's word says that I am, I was, I was forethought in my mother's womb, and I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So you write down the lie and, and then you cross it out and you put God's truth and what he says about you underneath. What's cool about uh, the world we live in today is, man, you can Google anything and you all know anything, right? We don't want to Google just anything. We want to Google something good. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to say, all right, if your lie is you're always going to be sad, you're always going to be depressed, you're always going to be worrisome, you're always going to have whatever, you're going to get online, you're going to Google scriptures about depression or scriptures to, uh, how to overcome depression. And I'm telling you what, you'll get a, brrr, it'll come up. And you're going to take those, and you're going to write them down, and you're going to put them to memory. You're going to memorize them. And you're going to say, okay, the next time that thought comes up in my head, instead of me pondering upon it, instead of me thinking it, instead of me meditating on it, no, 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 I'm going to replace, I'm going to, defend, I'm going to demolish the stronghold with the word of God and, and what he's going to say, and I'm going to take that thought out, I'm going to fill God's word in place of that thought. Because I want God to be the master of my mind. I want God's thoughts to be my thoughts. Because your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thought. And what you think in your mind comes out in your life. What's the number one stronghold in your life? And then you find what's the number one truth, God's truth, that he speaks about you. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says it this way. It says, his divine power has given you everything, everything you need for a godly life. I'm not attractive, not really anything to look at. No, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'll just be miserable and hurting the rest of my life. No, the joy of the Lord is your strength. But I'm always going to be alone. No, he says he never leaves you, nor does he forsake you. I'm, but I'm just a victim. I've been victimized. No, you're a victor because greater is he that is in me than he is on, in the world. And we don't triumph by our own self, but we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the truth of what He says about you. You're not who your enemy says you are. You are who God says you are. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thought. What comes in in your mind will come out in your life. You cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. You cannot have a peaceful life with a worrisome mind. Over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about the practical ways of doing this. 
But John chapter 8, verse 32 says, it says that Jesus says this. He says, you will know the truth. And what is it? You guys all know the rest of this. You will know the truth. And what will the truth do? The truth will set you free. Get you out of the fortified stronghold, the prison in which you live. Don't fall for the lies of the enemy. Trust that the word of God will demolish the stronghold in your mind. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father God, help us today to be able to open our hearts and our minds to hear what you want to say. God, I believe that there are those in this room, God, that are struggling with their thought life. They're struggling with the thoughts of their inadequacies or their thoughts of failures or the thoughts of, of where they fall short. God, there's many here today that are struggling, but God, I just pray that you would set them free. Those of you here today that say, your thoughts are running your life. You're overwhelmed with fear and anxiety, negative thinking and worry. Your thought life is ruining your life. At some point, you have to surrender that thought and make it obedient to Christ. Let the truth of God's word come and set you free. Others of you here today, you're in a prison. Your prison that you're in is disbelief. You doubt God. Sure, you look the part on the outside, but you're so far from God. Satan tries to tell you you don't deserve God. Satan tries to convince you you can do without God. Satan tries to tell you your life is better without God. These are all lies. God says today, I know you're scared. I know you're hurting. I'm with you. Head bowed and eyes closed today. You're here and you need God to help you in your thought life. You need God to direct your future and your path. Your, your path that you're going on. Because right now, your thoughts are not good. You need him to come be the master of your mind. Head bowed and eyes closed today. Would you just, if that's you, I'm not going to have you raise your hand or anything today. I just want you right there where you're at. Just say this very simple prayer. God, you know my thoughts. You know the lies the enemy is speaking to me. I ask you, Reveal your truth to me. Help me to find your word and what scripture says about my situation. And then I ask you, Jesus, every day let me memorize and recite your word to defeat the lies of the enemy. Father, our minds are powerful minds consume and tear down, say things we shouldn't say and hurt people we shouldn't hurt. God, how I pray that you would help us all through the power of your spirit become masters of our minds, masters of our thought life, masters of our future. As we, as we travel with you, God, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen.